Uh, so we are still, we are focused on uh, core, all kinds of exploration with core. Let's start supine. I'm trying to set this right. Let's start supine. Nice dog in the picture. Um, uh, so you can get comfortable on, on your back for starters when you're ready. And I like to kind of feel like I've sort of laid the bones down, laid the skeleton down. So I, I'll i lift up my hips because I want to place the sacrum on the ground and I want to lengthen the, the tailbone, right? As opposed to having the tailbone be poked back. I'd like the tailbone to be uh, flat or if anything, tilted up a little bit, uh, something like that underneath me. And then my sacrum is flat on the ground. And then same thing with my ribs. I like to lift up my ribs and then lay those shoulder blades right underneath me. And then hopefully that also drops my arm bones right into the socket. And then this sort of is a good comfortable place to start. Your arms can be down by your side. You can have, have bent knees here. So feet on the floor, we'll come into some bridge work, uh, but let's start with our breath. So just having organized, let's take your attention into your interior space by just starting to breathe. And if you kind of just came into your room, your breath might be a tad shallow. So just start to invite the diaphragm to expand down towards the belly, into the belly. Just gradually deepen the inhalation. And the exhalation can be fairly passive this early in our practice. Just notice the sensations in the body when the air comes in. Notice the sensations in the body when the air goes out. We're going to talk about Lula Banda and Udiyanda Banda today. And Lula Banda is really connected to your root chakra. So your root chakra you can think of as the lowest chakra in your in your body. It's the lowest chakra in your torso, right? So it's it, it's right in the center at the bottom of, of your torso where your pelvic floor is. So pelvic floor and root chakra are linked. And with Lula Banda, we just want to have this idea and just, just keep breathing. With Lula Banda, we want to basically have the idea of that I'm inhaling through the center of me. So, so behind where I urinate and above my anus. So that zone right there. Um, so for women, you can think of it as inhaling up your vagina. For men, it's sort of like where that, that part of you would be, right? So just have this, it's like a mind game, right? So I just want to feel like when I, in, when I inhale, I'm, I'm drawing air up from this low spot. And then when I exhale, my pelvic floor does draw up with my diaphragm, right? So my arm, my hands are the diaphragm moving. So when I inhale, my diaphragm pushes down towards the pelvic floor, right? And I'm imagining I'm inhaling through that center of me. When I exhale, my pelvic floor can elevate with my diaphragm as it comes back up. So just kind of be in that flow for a while. That Lula Banda idea is just, we're just trying to increase our sensation or awareness of the root chakra area by inviting a specific feeling on the inhalation and a different feeling on the exhalation. And that is your Lula Banda. So right now we've been gentle on the exhalation. What I'd like to invite you to do now is deep inhalation now, just use a little more energy to draw your core, your core up and in on the exhalation. So exhalation can be purely passive. And now we're going to just get a little more activated. And this starts to get into what Udiyanda Banda is. So the chakra is above root chakra. And then uh, sacral chakra is kind of right where your transverse abdominus is, below the belly button. And then solar plexus is right kind of over the belly button, right? So those are the next two chakras coming up. So Udiyanda Banda uses the next two chakras to sort of really draw the core up and in. And if I want to be extreme in Udiyanda Banda, I can really kind of 
try to uh, shallow out my belly on the exhale. Um, and you might have seen pictures of yogis doing this. Sometimes they're doing it in a standing or in a uh, kind of a squat in a hinged position. You can see the you can see a picture of them emptying kind of, it looks like there's no belly there whatsoever. It's completely sucked in and up towards the rib cage. So just keep going with just a little more aggression in how you're exhaling. And this is much more aggressive than you would ever be in, in our movements as we start to add um, asanas. A couple more, um, but is something you can think about, right? And now relax everything, less, less aggression on the exhale. As you listen for a moment, I just want to, you to have that awareness of how you can draw in the muscles in the front of your body, which also draws in the muscles on the side, which also draws in the back, right? So the entire core draws in in this beautiful way and supports us. And we want the core supporting us when we're moving. So we can use an exhale to help us when a move is difficult. We exhale when a move is difficult. So let's let's get into some bridge work and um, notice how your skull is on the mat, your neck is curved away from the mat quite naturally, fairly large curve. Your shoulders and your thoracic spine are on the mat, and then your lumbar spine is curved away from the mat in a in a slightly smaller slope than the neck is. Right, so you so you can put a hand behind your back and you can't quite get it in there, but you can put a hand completely under your neck. Right, it's a bigger space. And then your sacrum is on the ground. So we're just identifying what's on the ground and your feet are on the ground. So for bridge, I want to stay right here and inhale. And then I'm going to exhale, push my feet down, feel my glutes activate, feel my hamstrings activate, feel my quadriceps activate, feel my core activate, lift me up. There's a line from my knee to my shoulder. And then I can inhale and come back down. So let's use the exhale, pushes me up. Inhale, push your feet down. My knees stay in line and my hip stays, stays even, square with my shoulders. So the box that is my shoulders and my hips are going up and down. And feel, if you will, the, really push the feet down. Feel like also feet to shoulders. Feel that connection for a couple of times. Just notice that. One more time up and down. And come on down. Great. And hug your knees in and rock your sacrum a little bit. Release any tension that might have approved of air. And then place your feet back down. And let us put um, hand over hand. So just hand on top of hand behind my head. My elbows are open. And so my, my hands are here to support. I'm going to lift my head. But I don't want just to lift. So here I'm lifting my head. Just my arms are lifting my head. That's all I'm doing, right? What I actually want to do is I want to, with an exhale, start the lifting of my head and shoulders way down here in my core. So let's inhale here and then exhale and see if you can just lift yourself up with your core. And inhale back down. Exhale, lift yourself up with your core. So it's the same action of lifting the abdominals up and in. That's what I want to be feeling here. We'll get the legs involved in a moment. All right, relax back down. Just have a couple of cycles of breath. Leave your hands where they are. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to keep the legs in place, but we're going to add a twist as if I was trying to twist and bring the opposite elbow to the opposite knee, but I'm not going to move the knees yet. I want to just feel 
the sensation in my upper body, feel the, the activation of the core to lift me and the activation of my side muscles, the obliques to twist me. So I'm gonna twist at the waist when I lift, all right? So inhale on the ground, and then when you exhale, draw everything up and take a twist. Inhale back down, exhale, take a twist. So we're just focusing on the action of the upper body. We will add the lower body momentarily. So your hands are supporting your head, but your core is really what's lifting you. So my head can feel heavy in my hands. One more each side with this twist. Oh, feeling this. All right, come back down. Have a few cycles of breath, just resting for a moment. I've been writing about this recently. Rest is a key part of exercise. So we don't just power through thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. It's actually really useful to rest in between effort. You know, which can be a minute, can be two minutes. All right, we're ready to go. So now I'm going to lift up my feet so that my knees are ready for action because then I'll, let's just do the... Leave your upper body on the floor. The lower body is going to do this. I'm going to pull one knee in and stretch the other leg away. And then I'm going to pull the other knee in and stretch the other leg away. So just kind of rehearse this before we involve the upper body. <laughs> and you can feel the transverse abdominis working. And the low, I feel my lower back working and my obliques working to a certain extent to allow this leg action. All right, then everything comes in. So now, now we're gonna marry all of that together. So let's inhale on the ground. And then exhale, twist, and pull one knee in. Uh, and, then, and then inhale, see if you can stay at just as high and exhale the other way. So we're gonna try to do this staying elevated. And if that's not successful for you, you can inhale and go down and then exhale and come up. Inhale and go down and exhale and come up. So you can make a choice between those two actions. So keep breathing. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Couple more. All right, come on down. Whoa, that was fun. Let's put our feet on either side of our mat a little bit away from us. We're going to windshield wiper and really invite some relaxation into this core area that we just really activate, okay? So uh, just breathe naturally. You're gonna just drop your knees to the right, back to center, drop your knees to the left. So just go through this motion. If you can just feel really easeful in the core that just worked so hard. And I'm realizing I forgot to mention having some blocks, having a couple of blocks in the vicinity would be useful for this practice. All right. Put your knees in, rock your sink them a little bit. And we'll come around for, for all fours, cat and cow. So you can roll to one side or you can rock up, take it as you prefer. And uh, so I invited some blocks, right? So what I'd much like to do for my cat and my cow, this is a little bit different. I'm gonna just take one of these blocks and I wanna put it between my thighs for my cat and my cow. And I've got two options. So the narrowest, would this would be the narrowest. Um, and then the next would be to put it like this. And I honestly wouldn't want to put it like this. So <laughs> I'm either gonna go choose this or choose this for my cat and my cow. Um, and it's fairly, uh, it's fairly high up towards your root chakra as opposed to being way down where it would be kind of catching some bone, some knee bone holding it, right? So I want to kind of be squeezing. I'm squeezing with my thighs, all right? So then 
Come into your cat and cow, normal cat and cow position with that block. Uh, untuck your toes. Hands are underneath your shoulders. And if you need fists, you can take fists if that's if, if your wrists have difficulty. And uh, just kind of shrug and move your shoulders around a little bit so that you can feel where you feel strong and stable. Arm bones are in your socket, collarbone is broad. And then similarly, move your pelvis up, so kind of wag your tail, move it up, and then pull it all the way down, up and down, which is actually the motion we'll do in cat and cow, and then find what neutral feels like here to be our starting place. So we always want to have neutral as a location we can find. So uh, I'm looking straight down. My neck is in line with my spine. Let's start our cat and cow. So I'm going to inhale, fill my belly, pull my shoulders back, lift my pelvis, lift my head. And I've got this beautiful back bend at the top of my cow. And I'm just noticing how my legs feel squeezing this block. And then I'm going to exhale, drawing my body up. And pelvis drops, head drops, shoulders come forward. And I'm coming into my security cat. Again, feeling what it's like to squeeze this block underneath me. So keep going with your cat and cow at your own pace with your breath. Four times through. And then release out of your cat and really find your neutral. Just breathe in the neutral. And anytime in our practice, if it occurs to you to involve the Mula Bandha of inhaling through your low root chakra, you may. And if it doesn't occur to you, that is okay too. Um, so we'll take that block out for now and let us get involved with some bird dogging. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, inhale and reach my left arm and my right leg, even with my body, keeping my torso still. So let's in, reach it, exhale, come Inhale to reach, exhale back, keep that going. So I'm really reaching fingers and toes, exhale return, reaching fingers and toes, exhale return. And really feeling the stillness in the torso. I love bird dog for a lot of reasons. Uh, and the principal one is that it's really great at strengthening the pillars of support in the lower back, multifidus, quadratus lumborum, and so it's going we'll to turn this side and then come back in. Let's slide back to a child's pose and mm -hmm. the arms forwards, push the hips back. You, your forehead may come down on the ground or you can put it on your hands, whichever you like, and breathe here for a couple of cycles. Again, a restful moment in between our work. Inhale, 
and come up. And here, I like to, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna invite a challenge, uh, which is gonna be coming to standing. So you can feel free to watch me for one. Um, I am going to inhale my left arm and my right leg. Then I'm gonna exhale, put my left hand down. Um, and inhale and put my right foot near my right hand and then see where I'm going. I want to stand up. And then I'm going to exhale and I'm going to stand up. Right. And that was a little unsmooth. I want to smooth it out if I can. And then I'm going to, in, uh, so I can inhale to come, to come back down and then and exhale here and then inhale and I go right back into my bird dog. So you can join me this time. So let's inhale here. Exhale, put my hand down. Inhale, set my foot. Exhale, stand up. And then in, inhale to come, to come back down. And exhale, and then inhale, back in. Let's do this side two more times. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale one more time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. All right, come take everything in and relax everything. We'll go to the second side. So we're aiming for three. Um, so really make sure I'm neutral, really strong for starters. Inhale, exhale, the hand comes down. Inhale, the foot comes forward. Exhale, I stand up. Inhale, I come back down. Exhale, I set, get set. Inhale, back my starter position. Keep going. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One more time. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Take a break. Um, and actually in this break, let's do a little broken toe. So I'm on, so my toes are underneath me and I'm gonna just take my weight back. And I like to come all the way here, but this might be too intense. If it's too intense, just take some weight off of the toes. So I just love broken toe pose sometimes. Another, it's like a rest moment, but with the benefits really great for the feet. And we're going to try, we're going to do the standing up one more time with an added challenge. And the added challenge is going to be when I stand up, if my right leg is the leg I'm standing on, when I stand up, I'm going to see if I can bring my left knee into the air so that I can, so I can, when I stand up, I'm balancing on one foot. That's what we're going to try now. Okay. Uh, so great. So let's come forward, find our neutral. Uh, we'll start right leg, left arm. Okay, good. So, and I'm going to talk less about the breath and more just about the movement. So you can breathe naturally throughout. So I'm going to stretch out, put my hand down, bring my foot forward. So this time when I stand up, I'm going to try to lift this opposite knee up if I can. May or may not work. And then take me back down. Uh, and, and in the pose. Great. So let's try that again. <laughs> take what take take what your body's giving you. <laughs> Very strong move for the core, right? So core, 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 core. <laughs> Even though I was off balance. <laughs> All right, shake it out, shake it out. We'll do the other side. <laughs> so here we are. This is actually my left uh, side is my weaker ankle. Uh, so here we are. Let's get started. So again, you're breathing naturally. Step, and then I'm gonna see if I can lift the knee when I come up, and then I'll go back, right back down. I do wanna end in the pose. Now come forward. And I think I'm going fast right now. You can go slower than I'm going. <laughs> I just realized. Throwing myself into it. All right, and end of the pose. All right, <laughs> another child's pose. Uh, this time, put your arms back behind you. 
Clasp your hands, roll your shoulders back, lift your arms away, and breathe here. Just let the core relax against the thighs in the front of the core. And the back of the core can relax too, and the side of the core can relax here too. All right. Let us, um, let's just take ourselves forward uh, prone, getting ready for some shoulder uh, lunge. You take yourself forward with your hands underneath your shoulders so you can lower your head down for a moment and then really draw those shoulders back so the head is a little more covering and pressing the hands down, hugging the elbows in. Let's inhale up and feel how the core lifts you up in cobra into this back bend. You may not be as high as me, that's okay. And exhale down. So take it where you want to take it. But see if you can sort of feel like the, the shoulders go back, the chest lifts, the core lifts me up. Nice back bend. Exhale down. A couple more times. Actually, let's do it one more. Gorgeous. Now, I want to, I need to move up. I want to tuck my toes, hands are here, and I'm going to push myself up to downward facing dog, and I can do it through plank, or I can do it through all fours. So take what, take what works for you to get yourself up to downward facing dog. Feel strong arms, strong shoulders, Broad collarbone, front of body, long back, relaxed head and neck, chest melting towards your thighs, hips lifting up and away. You can actually go ahead and pedal here. And then go ahead and inhale, take your hips up and exhale. And I'm going to play a little bit more with these toes here. So probably your heels are not on the ground, um, from, and that depends on sort of the length of your Achilles. Uh, mine actually can, can get fairly low, but uh, I don't want to ever push and strain that, right? So my heels can be, my heels want to be where my Achilles are comfortable. So, so wherever that is, is fine. However distant your heels are from the ground is perfect. And what I want to do is inhale and just come up, push up on my tippy toes and then exhale and, and, and release that. So just kind of come up on my tippy toes and release it, come up on my tippy toes. And just sort of notice how your core is supporting this action, which can feel like it's just a foot action, but I'm actually feeling it quite a bit in my core. Beautiful, then relax for a moment, inhale and exhale. And then inhale and then exhale. Drop yourself forward to a plank and see if you can come up on your tippy toes in the inside your plank. And then inhale back, exhale, drop yourself forward, see if you can come up on your tippy toes inside your plank. Inhale back, exhale, kind of a tippy toe plank. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Let's inhale up. Let's exhale forward. Feel those tippy toes. <laughs> and then inhale back. Open your mouth and exhale. Or just inhale our right leg up. Exhale. Step it forward near my hand if I can reach it there. Let my left knee come down right under my hip. And then inhale up. And just establish with, so I've got two right angles, two opposite right angles in the leg system. Uh, let us inhale our arms up and exhale and side stretch to the right, feeling side body as you stretch this way. Inhale up and then exhale and side stretch to the left, 
but don't lose your balance, right? So you gotta really stay anchored with the legs. Inhale up, exhale, side stretch right. Inhale up, exhale, side stretch left. And inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale up, take your knee underneath you so you're in a, uh, so you're kneeling for a moment and you can let your arms down and just be strong in the core, like elevate the core like you're standing here. Long tailbone really elevated in the front. And then take the other leg forward, knee stacked over the ankle, you get the two in the opposite direction, inhale, arms up. Exhale, take me to the left. Inhale over to the right. Staying really stable on these strong legs, strong core. Alternating each side, we'll do three. Hands down, and then you're going to pull your right leg forward and place your right foot next to your left foot, and you'll be in a forward fold, right? So I'm going to so, so this is where I am now, and I'm just come forward, and there I am in forward fold. So I'm hinged at the hip, knees are bent, right? Ankles are bent, I'm hanging down, and just breathe here. Right, and then inhale. Half lift, exhale, forward fold, inhale, reverse one, dive in, exhale, hands in front of my heart. Well, I need to move back a tad so that my head stays on screen. Um, so we are going to do a, a standing series that involves a block. Um, so for starters, I'm going to have the block in my right hand. I'm going to stand at the front of my mat. And I'm going to inhale and grow super duper tall. And then when I exhale, I'm going to step my right leg back into a high crescent lunge. So my left knee is going to bend stack over my ankle. I'm on the ball of my right foot unless I have trouble and need to put the heel down which is perfectly fine if that's what is required. And then I'm actually gonna put the, the block in both hands and inhale over my head. Then I'm gonna exhale bow, reaching with the block and inhale back up. Feel what you feel here. Exhale, so feel the legs, feel the porch. Inhale back up, exhale. And inhale back up. Now, put the block in your right hands, right up in the air. Inhale here. Exhale to bow. Place the block at this high level, right hand on it, and then twist and revolve to the back of your room, opening your shoulders to the back of your room. Breathe here. Exhale and then inhale. All the way up, core, core, core lifts you up. Beautiful. And then I'm going to exhale into warrior two. So I've exhaled into warrior two. So, so I'm facing you for the moment. So knees stacked over ankle. This leg is straight. This foot is at an angle, whatever's comfortable for me. Where My hips are wherever they're comfortable. The block is in, still in my right arm. And let's go ahead and inhale our arms into warrior two. Look out over your left arm. And then let's uh, let's inhale our arms up and exhale to reverse my warrior. Inhale my arms up, trade the block. So give the block to your left hand and exhale, reaching and straightening the leg over into triangle. So place the block, it's under you. So your triangle may be a little bit higher than you can go normally, but just feel what this feels like. And you, you could choose to put the block at a lower level too. That's up to you. Beautiful. 
And then let's inhale, come up with the block and exhale. We're gonna go again um, into a revolved triangle. So I'm gonna swap and give the hand the block to my right arm. I'm gonna inhale up. I'm gonna exhale, reaching in triangle. And I'm going to place the block with my right hand and then take myself into a revolve triangle, twist back behind. Beautiful. Then inhale back and up. I put it back on my left hand. <laughs> exhale, reverse for the warrior. And inhale up. All right, now we want to try for half moon. So the block is in my left hand. And the easiest thing to do, because I've had to take myself over and lift this leg and be over to the side of my room. So the easiest thing to do, so this is in my hand, right? So inhale, just be nice and tall. Then you can exhale and sort of just tap in so you're kind of closer to your destination. And then inhale and lower your upper body to the floor so your hand connects. And then exhale and start to bring your leg up and open your shoulders and open your hip. And there you are. Half moon. Breathe. All right, and then you can exhale. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, let's reverse the warrior. Inhale, my arms can come up and exhale, step out and just shake everything out. That was a nice long sequence. And we're going to do the second side. So I'm standing at the front of my mat, hip width apart. The inhale, nice and tall. I'm going to exhale, step my left foot back into my high crescent lunge, if that's successful for me. If not, I can put the heel down, which is technically warrior one, which is fine. Inhale, my arms up. Let's have the block in both hands. Inhale up. Engage my core, engage my strong legs. Exhale to bow. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, strong, strong, strong. Exhale. And inhale. Walk in my left, exhale here, inhale taller, exhale to bow place, and then in and then inhale, shh, open up, revolve. Exhale here, and then inhale to come around and all the way up. And then you can swap hands as you exhale into. Warrior two, so you're looking out over your right arm and your block is in your right hand. Torso is long, hips are comfortably where they are. Left foot is comfortably where it is. Right foot is in front. Inhale here. Exhale, reverse it. Inhale, arms up, straightening my leg. Exhale, reach me over into triangle. And then inhale back up. And then inhale back up, switching the block in my hand as I come over into triangle. Uh, as, as I come over into triangle, and then I'm going to pivot around. The revolve triangle. And then inhale back. And exhale, reverse. Inhale, arms up, swap. So we're going to get ready for my half moon next. So go ahead and inhale. Go ahead and kind of exhale to tap in. Then you can inhale to lower down. And then exhale to, exhale to lift and open. Breathing, breathing, breathing. That is so gorgeous. And then inhale and exhale, reverse. And then inhale up and exhale and step out and just step around and do whatever you wanna do. So that was huge. <laughs> All right, great. Um, 
Let us, if you've got two blocks, let's involve both blocks. I want to focus on the obliques, which, which were featured in our first kind of crisscross motion on the ground. And they have helped in everything we've done, but let's feature them a little bit more. So I'm going to put this block between my legs, either, um, either like this or like this, whatever I like, pretty high up on the thigh. Uh, so this, so this ends. I am. I end up about hip width apart. It's like that. Uh, okay. Stand up nice and tall. Put this other block between my hands, and that's going to come up and over my head. Great. So squeeze in. So feel the glutes. Feel the core really activating. Uh, and what we're going to do is inhale here and exhale. And I'm going to drop to one side. I'm going to inhale in the center. I'm going to exhale. I'm going to drop to the other side. So again, this is very oblique focus. So you take your pace that suits you using your breath. Inhale. Inhale. Two more after this. All right, come out, stretching. Take the block out, release everything. Okay, um, we shall lower ourselves down to the ground now for some more work. So facing the front, uh, let us inhale, arms up. I can take a little back bend here if I like. And exhale forward, fold, drop everything down. Inhale, back lift. Exhale, forward, fold. And just take my knees back behind me and turn around. Let's sit up nice and tall. So this is a core engaged activity, right? So if I was a little slumpier and not asking anything of my core, right? But, if, but I can sort of feel my core lift me up in my good posture. So go ahead and do that kind of schlumpy, then feel how you can kind of activate your whole core to stand up nice and straight. Great. Uh, let's flex our feet and point our toe, point our hands and then do the opposite, releasing ankles and wrists that did a fair amount of work for us today. So on a core, on core practice day, it is very good to explore boat pose and we can um, see what we want to do with our blocks. Um, so they can be in the vicinity. Um, so what I'd like to do first is having feet on the ground and arms elevated. So we're going to, we're going to break boat pose down into little pieces. So I'm going to bring my feet in. I'm still sitting nice and tall, right? So I don't want to kind of clumpy. I'm sitting up nice and tall. And what I can do is let's go ahead and add that I've got a block between my knees. Um, I, I'm doing it at this level, at this pace. So there, there it is. So I'm squeezing with my legs, a little, a little activation with the legs. I'm going to lift my arms up. And my action is this. I'm squeezing with my legs, but I'm lowering myself down. As far as I can lower myself with control, right? If I was going to drop, I would. I, I want to stop before I'm going to drop, right? So go back as far as I can go back. Take myself back. And I want to exhale where I fight, find it the most challenging. So I pretty much am inhaling. And exhale, I'm going to lift myself back up. But you could, you might feel it. You're, you might feel slightly differently in your body. In which case, you want to just exhale where it's harder. All right, great. Now, let us take the block out because I want to use the legs without the distraction of the block at first. Um, so now, move my hands down behind me. However, they land. Mine happen to land like this, but but everybody's arms are shaped slightly different. So wherever your arms land is fine. Feel like you've got a broad collarbone. And then now what I want to do is support 
tall here, um, and but but I'm going to bring my legs up, which is going to make me lean back, right? So I'm on my sits bones, but I've leaned back because I need room for my legs to come up in the air. So I can be here, I can be here, right? And I'm involving my legs, but I put some hands. So feel this. Just breathe in and out. All right. Now, full boat would be arms up, legs up, right? So for full boat, I can be here. Again, I'm on my sits bones, right? So I'm not, I'm not I'm here somewhere. I'm right here on my sits bones. And if I want to straighten my legs, that's a little more work to straighten my legs. And if I wanted to play with the idea of squeezing a block here, I could. All right, and let me give you one more variation. So you're gonna pick, when, when, when I do the next thing, you're gonna do what suits you. So what suits you might be arms down, what suits you might be uh, arms up, legs down, both, all right? And I'm gonna show you one more variation, which we call a uh, tugboat to cruise liner. Um, so you can take it if you want it, but you don't have to. <laughs> So tugboat to cruise liner is this. Here I am, I'm a tugboat. I'm gonna stretch out of a cruise liner, tugboat, cruise liner. So you take whichever one you wanna take. Maybe I should call it an ocean liner. A little more, wherever you are. All right, uh, let's do a time check in a water set. Oh, it's time to come to uh, So let's do that. I uh, still have a block somewhere. Uh, let us um, get comfortable with supine. So just kind of do all that checking you did the first time. Uh, so your skeleton is firmly on the ground. Your collarbone is broad, arm bones in the socket. Tailbone long, sacred, flat on the ground underneath you. Shoulder blades flat on the ground underneath you. Just breathe here. All right. So let us, once again, Put a block between our thighs, um, and then we can hug our knees in. And we're, and everybody's a little bit different how close your knees are to your chest. Everybody's a little bit different, so be where it's comfortable for you. Inhale here, and then exhale, sort of squeezing the block. Drop your legs over to the left. And just kind of have it be whatever it is. There it is. Tee out your arms. So you're going to look out. You're, you're going to complete the spinal twist by looking out over your right hand. So tee out your arms and look out of your right hand and we'll breathe here. Center. Bring your legs back, still squeezing. I have to reset the block. So whatever you need to do, inhale here. Exhale, drop over to the right. See if the block is okay once you get there. And um and let us roll our head around and look out over the left hand and breathe here.
And now I'm going to get two blocks. We're going to have a little bit of fun as our final thing. So take your legs up so your feet are flat and put the blocks on your feet. And then see if you can control the block. <laughs> I'm already failing. I'm gonna to try to control the block to stretch my, to, to move my legs up and down. So just see what happens. See if you can. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm trying to go like that. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's fun, but it's really hard. So I'm trying to see, just see, just see, it's kind of fun, right? And notice how you think that this is all about your foot. It's kind of like balancing, right? You think this is all about your foot and your leg. And you know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling my core. So just see if you can notice that. So I'm feeling how much my core has to draw in to allow this to happen. So just, it's kind of funny. This is another Andrea inventing on the spot, just kind of finding this. I think it's super interesting. So just a couple more times. I'm, I'm astounded by how much this is like tree pose or a, other kind of balance pose. It feels really a lot like that in my torso. One more time. All right, great. Now, just for fun, take your knees into happy baby, leave the blocks there as long as they'll stay. And then you can take them off and grab your feet from happy baby. <laughs> so happy baby, I really want to invite you to kind of rock a little bit because this is a great way to release your, uh, relax and stretch your pelvic floor. Um, so we worked with it a lot today. We did a lot of kind of mula banda. We were talking to that whole part of our body a lot today. So let's really stretch it out in this happy baby. All right, and now I think I would like to try a slightly different setup for Savasana. And that is going to be to take you into a supported bridge. So your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor. Lift up your hip and put a flat block, so I don't want it to be higher than this necessarily, under my sacrum. All of my vertebrae are coming off the block. I'm not touching any vertebrae on the block. And just, just sort of be here. It's a different place, little back bendy for, for um, Savasana. And if I want to go higher, I can go higher, but I don't, but the, I'm under no obligation to go higher. So be where you are comfortable. And let us invite the arms to come into cactus. So you can take them up overhead and then bend your elbows down by the side. Right, so your right, your so your cactus arms. So your cactus arms. So very different position for savasana. And just once you're here, come into your breath. Oops. Make sure you feel supported by the block. So I can feel I can feel like I'm heavy on the block. And you can play with where your foot position is, whether you want to be a little closer or a little further away. So it feels feel heavy on the block. And your transverse abdominis is essentially supported by the block. And then rectus abdominis comes vertically up from that, right and up to your ribs. So just notice how this whole, this kind of T that is TVA in the front and rectus abdominis. Let's see how this whole T feels as you breathe. Just noticing the core, how it feels. Transverse abdominis actually goes across the hips and it comes all the way around like a corset all the way around, right above your glutes. 
And then the obliques are on the side, they hook in to the front and they hook in on the back. So you can notice how your obliques feel as you buy here. And then finally, we've elevated the lower back in the back. So we have the psoas, which starts at T12, which is the bottom of the thoracic spine, and right above L1, which is the beginning of the lumbar spine, in the interior of your body, two psoas muscles, twins, come down either side of the spine, weave through your reproductive organs, and then attach to your femur at the, at the hip joint, the only muscle that connects the upper body with the lower body. And with QL, two muscles, smaller muscles on either side of the spine in the lower back. And bultimidus is a muscle that is sewn into the vertebrae up and down the entire vertebrae. So bird dog is excellent for strengthening bultimidus in the lumbar spine. Um, and then all the other things that we do, the twists, et cetera, help the multivisions in other parts of your spine. Just kind of noticing that whole system kind of now you can just review that 360 degree core system that keeps you stable all day as we are here. And we'll come to silence for a few moments. For Savasana. your hips slightly so you can take that block out and lower yourself down to the ground and stretch out your legs and let's have just a few rounds of breath uh, before we move again. So just inhale deeply. Excellent. Your own pace. A couple more rounds of breath. Wiggle fingers and toes. And then start to move wrists and ankles. And then start to stretch your whole body and see with the stretching, reaching your hands away, pulling your legs away if you can really stretch your core out. And then let's pull our knees in. Let's choose to rock up. You can roll to your side if you prefer that. Otherwise, go ahead and rock up. And you can rock a few times before you come up to a seat. Uh, and then we'll sit comfortably. Uh, 
nice and comfortable, sitting up nice and tall. So my it's first time we uh, sat really fully with a cross leg today. So my shoulders are hovering over my hips. And let's inhale through our nostrils. Open our mouth and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Thank you so much for joining me for this core exploration. It was a lot of fun to find things. I've been having fun with this, kind of playing with the blocks in the standing sequence. Um, so thank you. I will turn the recording off. Uh, oops, I did the wrong thing. <laughs>